In this video, I want to show you how you can use the tools provided by Office 365 uh, from the Peel District School Board to allow you to um, do video conferencing with people uh, either inside the board or out of the board. Um, the easiest way to do that is to just start your journey at the BYOD page. So when you're on the BYOD page, um, Skype has recently, in the past year or so, been acquired by Microsoft. So it's sort of built right into the Microsoft Office 365 platform. And if you start by going to uh, the calendar function, then you'll see that when you create a new meeting, I'll start here by clicking on the new button, that uh, one of the options is that I can choose this to be a Skype meeting. So essentially a video conference. So when I select that, add a Skype meeting, I can give it a title, test Skype meeting. Um, I can set a certain time to it. So for our purposes, let's just say um, 11 so that it's right now. And I could also indicate the message. Hi, everyone. Click the link below to join the meeting. Up here, I can add people. So if they were people within uh, Peel District School Board, I could type them in by name or email address. But let's say I wanted somebody outside the Peel District School Board. In this case, I will put in my Peel SB account. Now, this is important to understand that although it looks like I'm adding a Peel District School Board email address, this Office 365 system is not built on this PLSB.com account. So this Office 365 system is really um, Mr. Dot Weissen, meaning my P number, P number at PDSB.org. And so by choosing to add this attendee, um, I'm actually, as far as this system is concerned, they think I'm emailing somebody externally and not emailing somebody within the Peel Board. The same could be true if I was to put a Gmail account for that matter. So I have this here and I decide I want to send this out. So I'm going to send this out. I can send this out ahead of time and the meeting simply won't become active until uh, the specified date and time are reached. So let's click send. So I'll just wait uh, for the email to come through into my Peel account. Okay, so you can see over here that the email has just come in. And I can accept the invitation, but if since it's the time for the meeting right now, I'm going to go ahead and click Join Online Meeting. And it's going to take me to this web page with some information. Let's click Launch the application. So what it was asking there is it was asking if I if I wanted to permit the web page to launch the application that's on my computer. So if I was doing exactly what I've shown so far and I did it on a school computer then Skype for Business is already pre-installed so if I were to click that button then I would automatically be taken to Skype for Business the application in fact it's still called um, before Microsoft acquired Skype it was a program called Link L-Y-N-C so it's gonna look a little bit different than this because it still opens up the old Link program but it's essentially the same thing and it will still do video conference so if you were at school then it will load up Link and you'll be a way to go if you email it to somebody externally then they will have a choice they can either uh, install Skype if they have it, if they have Skype for Business installed, um, it'll load the program. If they don't, they could also choose this to join using Skype for Business web app, which means that the whole video conference will happen through the browser and they won't need to have Skype installed at all. Now, let's assume that they do have Skype installed and for your purposes that you are able to use the Skype program. If you're at school, this will almost certainly be already logged in, but if it's not, I'm going to log in. Notice I'm using my Office 365 account, so pdsb.org. Okay, so I'm presented with the option to join the meeting. Um, and so that's fine. Go ahead. So it shows me I'm the only participant currently in the meeting and I haven't turned on my camera or anything like that. Um, but let's leave it at that. So 
I've logged into Skype. I'm using Skype for Business. Now, if you were at home and you didn't already have Skype for Business, the app installed, you could install it. Keep in mind that Skype for Business is a different program than regular Skype. So they, they are separate applications. You can install Skype and connect with your personal friends, or Skype for Business is designed to connect within the Peel District School Board. If you don't have Skype for Business at home, and this is just uh, this is accessory. You don't really need to know what I'm about to show you, but I figure since I'm, I'm, I have the video up right now, I can show you um, that you can install Skype for Business um, by first, if you were at the BYOD page, let's eliminate that. So if you're on the BYOD page um, and you went into any of the applications, whether it's Outlook or OneDrive, um, important thing is up in the corner here on the cog, you see Office 365 settings. And if you didn't already know about this, there is the option for installing software. And on your home computer, you can install all of these programs. These are um, Office, it says 2013, but in fact, it's, it's going to install Office 2016, the most recent version of all these programs, including Skype for Business. So you could go through this process and get Skype for Business installed on your home computer. OK, all that aside, um, Getting the meeting started is as easy as going into the calendar, I'll just remind you one last time, and creating um, a new event with Skype. Uh, as I mentioned briefly before, if you wanted to simply use your personal Skype account, then that, all, that can also be done if you simply took your personal laptop and plugged it into the LCD projector at school, and you could hook it up and run the Skype conversation exactly from your personal account. So hopefully that's useful, um, and feel free to get in touch with me if you'd like some more information um, or to another walkthrough on, on how to do that.